In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the search icon animation completely from scratch. Let's get started. Initially, I'm opening up the design file for this project so we can actually see what we're going to build. Initially, I want the landing state to look like this. I wanted to include the SVG for the search icon, and I want it to appear like a button. And when the user taps on it, I want the input field to expand, and I want there to be keyboard focus on this element. So that way the user can start typing right away. If the user were to click the close button, it would bring them back to the initial state. As they start typing inside of the field, I want it to look like this state. And so I want the user to be able to type whatever they want inside of the search field, and then I want this little delete button to appear over here. If the user were to tap on the delete button, I want the search input to be cleared, and I want to bring them back to the previous state. So there's still keyboard focus on this input field, but now the input is completely cleared. So this is the entire project that we're going to build. So we're going to need to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in order to create this project. So to get started, I'm going to jump inside of CodePen and go inside of the body tags of the HTML. In the HTML so far, I only have a link tag with a font family I'm going to use for this project. And then I just have body tags, which are empty. And so to begin, I'm going to create a div with a class of search. And so this will hold the entire element on the page. And so then we have to decide, well, which elements are we going to include in the HTML? So going back to the design, we can see that we have several elements. We have a search icon and we have an input field that will transform its appearance. Now we don't only have these two elements on the page. We eventually want it to look something like this, where it will be the search icon, the input field, a close button and a delete button. So I'm going to include all of these elements in the HTML structure. So within that div class of search, first I'm going to include the search icon. So I already picked SVGs that I like for this project. So I'm just going to copy and paste them in. So the first element I'm including is an SVG with a class of search icon, which will be this icon. Next, I'm going to include an input field. So here I'm going to create an element of input with a class of search input. It will have a type of text. I want the focus to be on it immediately. So I'm going to set autofocus here and a placeholder equal to an empty string. Containing this placeholder is important because we're going to use it later on in the project for some logic statements. Next, I'm going to include the other icons that we're going to need later on in the project. So I'm going to include an SVG with a class of search close, which represents this close button. And then I need a delete icon as well. So I'm going to just add a delete button. So this is given a class of search delete. So it's right here. So I'm using BEM for the naming convention within the HTML. So that's why I have search underscore underscore and then the item name. So this is actually all of the HTML that we need for the project and everything else will be completed within CSS and within JavaScript. So I'm just going to collapse all the icons so it's a little bit easier to read. So we have this div class of search which holds the entire element. Then I have the search icon, I have an input field, I have a close button and I have a delete button. So now that we have all these elements defined, I can jump inside of the CSS and start applying styling. Now for CSS, I really like using SCSS as a preprocessor here because it allows me to declare variables and keep my CSS really organized. So the way that you can add SCSS to your project in CodePen is by going to this little gear icon and then adding the CSS preprocessor in the dropdown. You can use another kind of CSS preprocessor, but I like SCSS. So that's what I'm using for this project. So first I'm just going to copy and paste some color variables that I already defined. So I'm going to reference these colors throughout the project. And then beneath that, I usually like to define some basic styling. So I always set the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero. So I'm just going to add those values in. Next, I'm going to start working on the body styling. So here I'm going to reference the body and I'm just going to set the font family and the font weight. I'm going to set the height of it to 100% of the viewport height and I'm going to set the display of this to flex. 
So with the display set to flex, I can now justify the content and align the items in the center. So that will ensure that this search element is in the center of the page. Next, I'm going to start working on this div class of search, which again holds the entire element. So here I'm going to reference that class. And with this search container, I'm going to set the position of it to relative. I'm also going to set the display of flex within the actual search element. So that way I can justify the content as flex start and I can align the items in the center. Next, I'm going to work on some basic styling for the SVGs. So again, I have three SVGs within this project. So here I'm just going to write SVG. And again, I can nest this SVG styling within this search because I added SCSS right here. So that's why I can have this hierarchy within the CSS. So for these SVGs, first, I'm just going to set the height of them to 6 REM and a padding of 1.5 REM. I'm going to set the position of these elements as absolute because I want full control over their placement on the page. And I'm going to want all the elements to appear interactive, so I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. Next, I'm going to work on the actual search icon. So here I'm going to write and icon. And I'm just going to set the fill of it to a particular gray color. And I always want this element to be at the top of the document so that way the user can always access it and click it very easily. So here I'm going to set the Z index to 99. So now we can see the search icon is on top of the other icons. Next, I'm going to work on the close icon. So here I'm going to write and close. And for this close icon, I'm going to set the right position to zero. I'm going to set the fill of it to white initially. And I'm going to add transition effects later on. So I'm going to add a transition of 500 milliseconds of the fill property with an ease in. So now we can see this element right here. Next, I'm going to work on the delete icon. So here I'm writing and delete. And for this, I'm going to set it to a different fill color and I'm going to set the right position to five REM. And initially I don't want this element to be visible at all. So I'm going to set the display of it to none. Next, I'm going to start working on the actual input. So going back to the design, initially I want it to appear like a perfect circle. And when the user taps on it, I want it to transform into a rectangle. And when the user clicks close, I want it to go back to the original circle shape. So here I'm going to reference the input. And first I'm going to set a box shadow. And I'm going to set the border to none. I'm also going to set the border radius to 50% initially. I'm going to set the padding of 1.75 REM and 3 REM. Now, if I were to type inside of this text field initially, it doesn't have the font family applied to it that I want it to. So here I'm going to set the font family to inherit and the font size to 2 REM. I'm also going to set the color of the text to a dark gray. And I'm going to set the outline to none. And I'm also going to define a particular width. So this is the initial state of that input field and it's looking pretty good so far, but when the user taps on it, I want it to transform how it looks. So here I'm going to add a transition property that is going to have several values. So all these values will take place in 500 milliseconds with the ease in out curve. And I'm going to apply it to the width, the opacity, padding, and the border radius, because those are the values I'm going to change in the open state. Great, so this is looking really good so far. So the next thing I want to do is actually define the open state. So here I'm going to write and open. So when that search field is in the open state, how do I want it to look? Well, I want that input field to change shape because now I want it to be a rectangle. So when that search field has this class of open assigned to it, I'm going to change the input field. So then I'm going to write input. And how do I want the input field to look? Well, I want to transform the width, so I'm going to set the width to 34 REM. I'm going to change the padding of the input field, so I'm adding that here. And then I'm going to add a different border radius. And so I'm just going to reference the radius that I have as a variable. I realize that I'm probably not going to modify that opacity value, so I'm actually going to delete it from the transition. 
I'm just going to leave the width, the padding, and the border radius there. And so when this is also in the open field, I actually want this close button to be visible as well. Here I'm just going to reference the open, and I'm just going to reference the SVG with a class of search close. And for this element, I'm just going to modify the fill to a different gray color. So now if this were in the open state, I would expect to see the search icon and the close button. Now to make this actually work, we're going to need some JavaScript. So next I'm going to jump inside of the JavaScript to actually apply some code here. So I'm just going to use vanilla JavaScript for this project. So first I just need to create variables that reference elements in the HTML. So first I'm going to create a search variable. So I'm going to write let search equal document.querySelector because I'm going to reference a class in the HTML and the class I'm going to reference is search, which again holds the entire element on the page. Next, I'm going to create variables for each icon. So for the search icon, the input icon, close and delete. And again, these follow the same procedure. So for the search icon, I'm querying the document for search icon, the input gets search input, close gets search close, and delete gets the delete icon. So now that we have all of these variables declared in the JavaScript, I can now add functionality to the project. So here, when the user taps on this search icon, I want to add the class of open to search. So here I'm writing search icon dot add event listener, and I'm going to listen for a click. And so if the user were to tap on this icon, I'm going to run a function. So I'm going to include an arrow function and I'm going to add the class of search open, which references this open state that we already declared in the CSS. So here I'm going to write search dot class list, which is a way to add a class to an HTML element. And the class I'm going to add is search open. I also want the input field to have immediate focus. So here I'm going to set search input dot focus. So now I'm expecting that when I tap on this icon, we will see a transformation. I click on it and we actually see the open state. We also automatically have focus on this input. Great. So next we have to add functionality for the close button and the delete button. So here I'm going to write search close dot add event listener. And here I'm also listening for a click. And so when the close button is clicked, I'm going to run a function and I actually want to remove the class of search open because now I want it to go back to the original state. So here I'm writing search dot class list dot remove. And so I'm removing that class. And I also want to clear the input value because if someone were to close it and then reopen it, I don't want it to hold the text that the user wrote. I want it to clear the search field. So here I'm writing search input dot value and setting it to an empty string. So now let's see what happens. I open it up, I write some text, and then if I close it, it goes back to the original state. And if I were to tap it again, the search is completely cleared. So the next thing I want to do is add the functionality for the delete button. So if we go back to the design, we can see that we have this delete button right here. So I only want it to be visible if someone actually typed in content in the search field. And if someone were to click this button, I wanted to delete the content and go back to this state. So here I'm going to write search delete dot add event listener. I'm going to listen for a click and I'm also going to run a function. And so I want to clear that search input value. And I also want to keep the focus on that search input. So here I'm writing search input dot value and I'm setting it to an empty string, which will clear the content in that search field. And then I'm also going to make sure that the focus is still on it. So I'm going to set search input dot focus. So if I were to open this and start typing, we actually don't see the icon on the page. So I have to go back inside of my CSS to make this element visible. So underneath delete, this is where we have the information for this delete button. And initially I set the display of it to none because I don't want it to be visible initially. But when there's actually content within this search field, I do want it to be visible. So beneath this input field, I'm going to add a little bit of logic. So what I want to say is that when there's actually content within this input field, I want that little delete icon to be visible. So there's a really cool way that you can do this with CSS and it's taking advantage of the placeholder. So initially in the HTML, we added a placeholder set to an empty string. 
So when this placeholder is shown, I know that there's not content within the search field because that's when a placeholder is shown. And then as soon as the user starts typing, the placeholder goes away. So I can take advantage of a CSS property called placeholder shown. So underneath that input, I'm going to write and not, and then reference that placeholder shown. And so what this is saying is that when the placeholder is not shown, which means that there actually is some content within that input field, what do I want to do? Well, I want to affect a sibling element. So here I'm going to add the sibling selector and the sibling I want to affect is the icon called search delete. So I'm going to reference that search delete. And then what do I want to do with that search delete? Well, I want to make it visible. So I'm going to set the display of it to block. So now we can automatically see that now this element is set to a display of block. So just to go over this one more time, for this input field, I'm basically saying that when the placeholder is not shown, when it's not visible, so right now it's not visible because it actually is content. But if I were to delete all this content, now the placeholder is shown, which it's an empty string, so it's not even visible to the user. But as soon as I start typing, now the placeholder is not shown anymore. So that's when I want this icon to be visible. So now if I were to click on this button, it deletes the content. If I click this close, it completely closes the entire element. So there you go. That's how I created this search icon to text field animation completely from scratch. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.